uh, in the last two session, uh, the Professor Maiti discussed about all those uh, all those uh, uh, data analytic part. That means uh, he gave a few examples on the of few real data, and uh, I think uh, most of the results uh, all of you are familiar. Uh, but uh, essentially, I will follow the note uh, that I wanted to show essentially. Uh, this semester I am teaching MSO 201 that is the basic probability and stat course, uh, not basic the first uh, probability and stat course for this institute that uh, uh, for uh, 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 probability and stat for engineering and science student of this institute. So, I am teaching this uh, says, uh, I did, teaching that course in this semester and already I have taken uh, 15 lectures. So, I have a few notes all those things I have uh, very organized notes I have in my own writing. So, uh, that essentially I wanted to show, but uh, if you want after the talk might be after the after the might be tomorrow or day after tomorrow I can share the notes, I do not have any problem. If you want you can share with others also, because uh, the results I will discuss everything available in the textbook. So, uh, I do not have any problem if you share with your friends or anyone else, I do not have any 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 problem at all. So, uh, first of all, when probability theory, we start with the probability theory, I think better to why, okay, no problem. So, probability. So, first I want to discuss something about the when probability theory can be applied because all of you are from the applied science interdisciplinary science CSC department. So, first of all one thing is that you can think about uh, in genetics sometimes we use probability theory uh, that the morning session professor Maiti also uh, tried to indicate that. Uh, the kinetic theory of gas uh, sometimes uh, whenever we discuss about the kinetic theory, noise in electric device, uh, atmospheric turbulence, actuarial science you know actuarial science uh, in those times definitely we use the probability theory. And theory of finance, in fact finance is a very uh, nowadays very hot topic in, 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 in our job market. So, finance in finance definitely we can use. So, uh, in order to learn the probability theory we have to learn we have to have few concepts uh, like random con experiments, sample space, uh, uh, then we can discuss about a few examples. Uh, then, then we can move to events. A uh, few definitions, all those things we can discuss. I have the note, it would have been better. Okay, I am keeping the my laptop here, in that case, it will be easier for me to follow everything. So, start with the random experiment. So, there are a few concepts like. random experiment number 1, number 2 say event, I will come one by one, I will try to describe uh, everything very one by one, uh, sample space, anyway sample space should be coming earlier than the event. event and then mutually exclusive event all those things. First of all, we try to discuss what is random experiment because whenever you are dealing with the probability theory, you know that you have to deal with the random experiment. So, random experiment means whenever you are doing the experiment, first of all, there are three properties you can think about. Number one, whenever you are tossing a coin, you know either head will appear or tail will appear. Whenever you are throwing a dice, either one will appear or two will appear or three or four or five or six. That means all possible outcomes are ad, uh, known in advance, but outcome of a particular trial we do not know in advance in past. That means uh, you know either head or tail appear, but before the trial you do not know whether head appear or tail appear. And, uh, the, and you can think about experiment means you can be can be can be repeated under identical conditions. That means uh, identical is I want to put as a code and unquote. That means uh, identical doesn't make any sense. We can't be an identical uh, identical situation. But 
uh, suppose I am I am tossing a coin here and, uh, and tossing a coin there, might be you can think about it is identical, but definitely it is not identical. Even at the morning, Professor Mighty said something about in the brain network, in the location uh, does matter sometimes. So, uh, so uh, anyway, but in the, those type of experiment, you can think about those are identical situation. So, I am just writing a few comments, few statements, uh, just a few facts. Start with random experiment. Uh, facts. Facts on random experiment. A is that all possible outcomes are known. Number B is that For example, there are few examples I consider. Just a minute, I better to keep it here. A few examples. Suppose uh, this are uh, generally if you look at the textbook, most of the textbook whenever they define, whenever they try to give the sample space, they generally give the sample space like coin tossing, uh, throwing a die. But I want to give some uh, different types of example, you will realize that uh, even in the real life situation, uh, you, can, you may think about the probability model, all those things. Suppose a person is walking in the road and there are three signals, two signals I, I think better to consider three signals okay three or four it does not matter okay three signals and signal can be red or signal can be green if signal red you have to stop and signal green means you can pass through. Uh, I am considering suppose uh, there are two signals, uh, three signals uh, type two types red, red means stop. So, I am writing S, red means stop and green means continue. Okay, there are three signals and uh, two types of signal, three signals, uh, red and green. So, in this random experiment, whenever a person is walking, uh, what type of situation you may face, uh, it, it may happen, uh, three signals consecutively will have green, so C, C, C. It may happen, uh, first signal is green, second signal is red third signal is green. So, in that case you can understand there are 8 possible outcomes it may happen. So, each signal if this there may 2 outcome it may happen green or uh, green or red. So, 2 into 2 into 2. So, all possible 8 outcomes. Okay. So, red means S and green means C. So, omega is and uh, I should write one thing is that uh, it is denoted by generally omega. 
in literature. I, you can denote it by anything, but it is denoted by omega. So in that case, omega equal to, I just tried, there's eight possible outcomes. So this is one of the example of uh, sample space. You can think about some other examples uh, uh, that also we can think about uh, in the real life example, the number of jobs in a print uh, print machine and how many jobs it can be. It can be in, in principle there might be you may you may give the printing of uh, one, one job or two job or three job or five job in principle you can think about 0, 1 to infinity. But in general, each and every printer has an upper limit. You cannot give, you cannot print, uh, say, uh, at the same time, you cannot print more than 25 or something like that. So, there are few issues. There are few issues uh, that means related to the machinery issues. So, this type of, uh, so sample space, uh, anyway, most of the textbook that give what I said earlier that they give the example in terms of the coin tossing or throwing a die. But this is one of the example in real life also, uh, this type of example you can think about. Another example you can think about in the earthquake, uh, since Professor Maiti also said something about um, atmosphere, all those things in the, uh, possibly yesterday night he was saying, I don't know, I forget that in the morning he mentioned that or not, the atmospheric turbulence or all those things. Suppose in the earthquake, you know that after the major major earthquake, there is a, some aftershock always happens. So, suppose I am I am mentioning that the, my uh, my experiment, what I am trying to say that the the uh, the, uh, the difference between the time between two consecutive earth, uh, two aftershocks. So that time can be zero. That time is a positive positive number. Any positive number is a might be after five minutes one shock, another seven minutes after another shock, another aftershock after eight minutes. So that 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 is also uh, that sample is defined as you can think about any t t greater than or equal to 0. That means any positive time after positive time after shock may happen. So, this type of real life example you may think about. Whenever I will send the in the note, it is clearly written. So, whenever I will send the note, you will realize if you go through the if you just browse the note. Next, I want to define one another concept that is called event. <laughs> Subset of omega and there are two definitions. One is mutually exclusive, another one is uh, exhaustive events. So, it is sometimes denoted by A, B, C, you can understand. For example, in that case, for this example, at least one event you can think about whenever you, whenever person will continue, uh, person will pass the road without any interruption, suppose. So, in that case, whenever the three signals con consecutively will have the green signal, in that case, you do not have any stopping, you just go through the uh, three signals. So, suppose I am I am defining event in that way. So, A equal to in that case C, 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 okay. So, suppose A denotes an event when I related this example, I am just ex ex considering example from this uh, example. So, A is an event, suppose the person will pass the three, uh, three signals, three signals without any interruption. So, in that case A equal to C. So, A is an event. A is a subset of omega. 
what is omega? Omega this is uh, this one, so A is a subset of omega. Okay. Now there are two definitions mutually exclusive and exhaustive. If A and B are mutually exclusive then uh, when a intersection b is null set okay that is mutually exclusive and mutually ex exhaustive you can think about in that way A1, A2, AN are mutually exhaustive if That means you can think about suppose this is your omega a1, a2, a3, a4, a5, a6. In that case, these are mutually exclusive and exhaustive as well. Okay. So, because a i intersection a j equal to null set and uh, all possible, if you take the sum, that means union, then it will be have the omega. I am just writing a few uh, set theoretic uh, law uh, to understand the essentially I will move to the probability result uh, very soon. So, some something I want to write. Now, these are the definitions concepts. A few facts. For example, one is that commutative law. what is saying that A union B and I am not, uh, I believe that all of you know that what is union intersection all this uh, complement uh, that I am not uh, discussing. A union B, uh, A union B equal to B union A, A intersection B equal to B intersection A, number B is that. associative law is that and another uh, quite interesting law is distributive law.
So that is, these are the three laws sometimes we use in calculating uh, different probabilities. So, now I want to move, uh, so these are the very basic concepts of the set, uh, you, if you know the set, uh, just I am um, just briefly, uh, there are several issues involved there, but I do not want to discuss and dig into more details. So, uh, these are the very basics, just I want to define the probability and then after probability we can think about a few other definitions, that means definitions of probability and uh, uh, then I will give discuss the some algebraic results related to probability. So, what is probability? Say classical definition. So let uh, omega is the finite set, omega can be infinite. So, whenever you are tossing suppose infinitely many times or, uh, or you can think about say what I said the earthquake example the time in time difference between the two consecutive earthquakes in that case uh, t greater than or equal to 0 uh, any number. So, that can be infinite, but suppose I am thinking about the uh, omega is finite, suppose we are tossing a coin omega is h and t uh, this type of things. So, if omega is finite. A let uh, I am defining a let that is let let omega equal to uh, small omega 1 small omega 2 small omega capital N and A is the event whose probability we want to calculate and A be an event let A be an event with any number of elements, any many elements. So, then probability of A equal to n a by capital n a by capital n. Just I am giving one example, uh, suppose we have uh, 4 white walls and 2 red walls. So, omega equal to uh, suppose I am just giving one example then uh, I think that will be clear. Suppose an iron content four white and two red balls. So, now we are taking just pick up a one ball and we want to see that the, what is the probability that the, the drawn ball will be red something like that. What is the probability that If we draw the ball, what is the probability that the drawn ball will be dead? So, in that case you know that omega is w1, w2, w3, w4 and r1, r2 and suppose so, equally likely, each element is equally likely and uh, your number of red balls is 2 and total number of balls 6, so 2 by 6. So, probability of A equal to right. In that case, probability of A is 
A denotes the event, A denotes the event event of concern. So, I think that will make sense. So, then one third. So, just try to think about if you think about this definition, this definition has true but drawbacks. So one drawback is that we are considering the omega is finite, uh, but omega in cat it can be infinite. And uh, another definition, another drawback is that we are assuming that the whenever you are calculating the probability, we are assuming that the elements in the sample space are equally likely. Uh, that means each ball picking up each ball is 1 by 6, and that's why we can calculate that is 2 by 6 equal to 1 third. So, that is the two disadvantage of the classical definition of probability that is why to overcome that problem one uh, then next concept is the relative frequency approach that means if you have the so suppose uh, you want to calculate the probability of having head in a coin tossing what you will do you will just infinite theoretically infinitely times you will draw the you will just uh, throw the coin and uh, you will just check that how many times head is appearing suppose say uh, if the unbiased coin might be at the beginning stage it will be unstable but if it is unbiased coin definitely after 100 or 120 times you will see that the stability is coming say and out of 1000 times 500 times head will come here uh, 500 times head will come appear so uh, it is not only for unbiased coin any any random experiment at least intuitively that has n tends to infinity definitely in practice n tends to infinity doesn't have any sense but as n tends to infinity if your uh, your uh, ratio n a by n will be stable okay and that is called the probability of that event so i'm not writing the disadvantage so i'm just writing the next definition uh, relative frequency approach Uh, that is you can think about probability of A equal to limit n tends to infinity n a by n and uh, but uh, this has also some problems this has also some problems like that number of uh, suppose in few cases at least scientific experiment that the, uh, the doing experiment is very costly. So, uh, if you have to carry out the experiment for infinitely many times it may not be uh, so practicable. So, in that case uh, mathematically it sounds ok, but in practice using the the applying uh, implementing this 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 definition this uh, may not be may not be so fruitful. So, this is one of the another disadvantage in in, in relative frequency approach. So, probability the way you can uh, define you can think about so what you are saying that the probability a uh, probability is a number you, you, it will give you a number it will give you a number lying between 0 to 1 n a is definitely less than or equal to capital n and n a is greater than or equal to 0 so it is lying between 0 to 1 probability will give you a number lying between 0 to 1 and it is a a is a is a set from the sub sample space omega so probability you can think about a function if you some uh, i think believe i believe that uh, most of you are familiar with the function so function is a mapping from one space to another space so probability is a function probability is a mapping mapping from where to where mapping from a subset sub omega i'm not defi defining all those mathematical details sigma field all those things that will be too much but you can think about probability is a function it is a set function it is a mapping from the subset of omega to a number to a 0 to 1 that uh, interval so, you can think about, so uh, we can define the modern approach. Uh, probability is a mapping. So, P is a function, uh, this is my probability, uh, that is essentially. Zero to one, okay, and P satisfies the following condition. So, 
So, what uh, Professor Mahathi said here uh, in the morning, uh, you can do, you can do any experiment, a little experiment, then in R you can calculate the ratio that will give you the probability, uh, the classical definition or, or even relative frequency approach you can do. Uh, you are just throwing a, uh, tossing a coin and just trying to do infinitely times and check that whether really the uh, number of head divided by total number of toy and tossing that is uh, converges, converges to a, a specific number or not. Uh, then you can, you can say something about the nature of your coin, whether coin is really biased or unbiased. If you see that after 1000 times, 500 times it is coming, you can see the 500 or 505, then you can say more or less it is unbiased. But if you see that after 1000 times, 700 times head appears, definitely the coin is not unbiased. Okay. Uh, so, P satisfies the following conditions. So, number one is that P of omega equal to one. Uh, number two is that if A is subset of omega, then probability of A will be lying between 0 to 1. And number three is that if A1 into a disjoint events, if A1 intersection a2 is null set, then so these are the three basic conditions. The last condition, third condition, can be extended for the finitely many sets also. That means uh, uh, if you have a1, a2, a3, a10, those are all disjoints mutually exclusive, then probability of union can be written as a sum of the probability. So, if, if any function satisfies these three conditions, you can think about that is a proper probability function. Okay. In fact, uh, one, one view, one other fact is that uh, you do not need to think about disjoint. I would like to say that even if, it, even if they are not disjoint, for any arbitrarily set B1, B2, Bn, you can make it disjoint sets, you can construct a disjoint set. So, suppose what I am trying to say, suppose you have sets B1, B2, Bn. So, you can from the B1, B2, Bn, you can make a const, you can construct a, another sequence of sets A1, A2, An such that A1, A2, An will be disjoint. So, always you will have this property, but whenever you do not have disjoint, this equality will be inequality. In that case, that will be probability of A1, A2, An is less than or equal to probability of A1 plus probability of A2 plus probability of A N. that is all. Now, I want to mention few inequalities. I am not proving it, but the proofs are given in the note.
And then uh, number four is that And that is we do not need to assume that the A1, A2 are disjoint. Uh, number 5 you can think about that is equal to Even for any finitely many sets, you can extend this result to a one union, a two union. So that way you can define. Now I want to give uh, a few more inequalities like uh, uh, probability uh, bon Bonferroni's inequality. The beauty of the Bonferroni's inequality is that uh, we you know one thing is that. Uh, what I wrote in the definitions of the probability, whenever you will have the disjoint sets, A1 union, A, A1, A2, AN are disjoint sets, probability of union of AI equal to sum of the probability, okay. And when they are not disjoint, in that case, probability of union of AI is less than or equal to summation over probability of AI. Now the fact is that so you will have always upper bound. You will always have the upper bound. Now if you want to know that the uh, what is your lower bound in that case, Bonferroni inequality will give you an uh, will give you an insight that the, what can be the uh, lower bound. So what I'm trying to say that the always for arbitrarily set of arbitrarily sequence of events, probability of union has an upper bound. But I, we, if you want to have some lower bound, in that case, Bonferroni's inequality will be helpful. And if you think about statistics purpose, in that case, you can think about suppose uh, uh, suppose uh, we want to test H naught against H1, and instead of the one test, we want to test say multiple test, say uh, ten many tests. In that case, we want to know that the whether we can preserve the type 1 error or not. So, we want to check that at least our null hypothesis is that out of H0, H1, H, suppose one first test is H0 versus H1, second test is that H0 star versus H1 star, third test is H0 double star versus H1 double star. So, in that way, suppose we have 20 many tests and we have to check that uh, at least one test is truth. In that case, you understand the union concepts you have to use. So, if you want to use under such situations that the, what is the uh, whether the type 1 error can be preserved or not, in that case also sometimes you will uh, consider the Bull's inequality, the Bonferroni's inequality. Just uh, I am writing two inequalities, those two are very powerful inequalities. One is called Bull's inequality, another one is called Bonferroni's inequality. One is um, a probability of union of AI, another one is probability of intersection of AI. So, Bull's inequality, first I am writing Bull's inequality. If you want it to win or then what I said that uh, we know this upper bound is known, this upper bound we already know from the definition, but uh, what we do not know 
this lower bound we are not very uh, very often we use but this is also give you the So probability of union of AI that is less than or equal to this part that is very just a common result. But this part, this part is not very common generally we do not use but that is also another inequality that probability <laughs> of union of AI is greater than or equal to sum of probability of AI minus this one. So in that case what we what you are trying to say suppose we have multiple testing problem we want to check that whether at least one hypothesis is true or not. In that case, probability of union of AI, AI is the null hypothesis is true, ith hypothesis is true. In that case, that will give you that the probability of ith hypothesis is true, at least that is greater than or equal to some probability. That is, that will give you some, uh, uh, some number lying between 0 to 1. Uh, that sometimes very crucial, very uh, strong result in statistical theory. And another inequality that is very strong inequality uh, that is called the von Fironis inequality. So that is also give you the, but there is a difference between earlier one. Uh, in the earlier one we consider probability of union AI, here it is a probability of intersection AI. Uh, that is greater than or equal to summation over probability of AI minus n minus 1. So that is called Bonferroni's inequality. This is also powerful in the sense of, uh, suppose I am just considering one example. I think most of, I think all of you are familiar with the independent events x1 and x2 independent random variables. You know that the x1 and x2 are two independent random variables. If uh, joint distribution is can be written as a product of the marginal uh, that is you know possibly. Suppose in case uh, uh, in the case of more than two random variables, suppose in the case of three random variables. In that case, uh, if you have three random variables x1, x2, x3, they, those will be independent if three pairwise are independent. So, whenever you will have three random variables, independence means x1, x2 will be independent, x1, x3 will be independent, x2, x3 will be independent, x1, x2, x3 will be totally independent. So, there are four conditions you have to satisfy. Just if you try to think about very carefully, if x1, x2, x3 are independent, this is the same statement as, equivalent statement as, x1 is independent of x2 and x3 jointly x2, x3 are independent among themselves. That is the same statement. What I am trying to say, when you this type of inequality will use, just I am trying to give you an in, uh, insight. Suppose I want to test whether x1, x2, x3 are 3 independent or not. You know the definition, the joint distribution of the 3 random variables is the product of the marginal, so that you know. Now my point is that this is equivalent, the same statement is that x1 is independent of x2 and x3 and x2 is independent of x3. We know that these are the same statement of four, st four conditions, pairwise independence, three pairwise independence and one total independence. I am saying that uh, we do not need to consider four conditions. If x1 is jointly independent of x2 and x3, 
and x2 and x3 are themselves are independent, then that is fine, uh, that will be good enough uh, for equivalent test. So, in order to test this, if you what you can do, uh, uh, you can avoid these tests, uh, these tests, instead of that, you can do these tests, you can to do. Uh, number one test is that x1 is independent of x2 x2 jointly and number two test is that x2 is independent of x x3 so uh, these two tests you simultaneously simultaneously you can do and uh, then if the both tests uh, results you will try to plug in try to uh, merge somehow so how do you merge so intersection ai a1 is that event that denotes the first hypothesis is true a2 denotes the event that denotes the second hypothesis is true so, probability A intersection A2 is both hypothesis is true, uh, these and these. If both hypotheses are true, that we know, uh, this is equivalent, that means x1, x2, x3 are independent. So, in that case, that is good enough and then we will use this type of result, probability of intersection AI, type 1 error, everything you can calculate uh, by the, this way. So, that is a very, nowadays it is, it is very general framework, suppose uh, we have, even this result can be, uh, that means probability a1 intersection a2 equal to probability a1 plus probability a2 minus 2. Suppose instead of the uh, 3 many random variables, suppose we have n many random variables. So, in the case of n many random variables, what we will do? That also you can write up in the, uh, you can split up in the two ways. x1 is independent of x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x9, xn and x1, x3 is independent of uh, remaining parts or something like that. So, in that case also you can use the Bonferroni's inequality. So, whenever you will have more than more than two random variables, suppose 3 or 7 or 11 and you want to test independence or something like that measure of association, you will just split up into the two parts or five parts or seven parts and then you use the Bonferroni inequality that will give you the idea. Otherwise, in the most of the book, the way it is written, it seems like that it is just a mathematical formula, but it is not a just a mathematical formula. It has a nice statistical significance in the uh, in the statistical theory also for any multiple test. Uh, even if you do not know how to carry out the multiple test, you do not have to think about the multiple test. You will just separately do the testing of hypothesis problem and then the Bonferroni's inequality. Even at the morning, uh, this is a very crude example, but I am telling you, in the morning when uh, the when Professor Maithi mentioned the first example, I think that example was related to the uh, genetic uh, gene, uh, gene, uh, gene data. So, one individual has 20,000 gene, second individual has 20,000 genetic structure, the information is given to you. Third individual is also, 15th individual is who are the diseased, they have 20,000 example and on the other hand, the other way also who are non-diseased, normal patient, uh, they are also 20,000 example. So, Anyway, that one should not do in practice, but in principle there is no problem. So, I am considering for each gene I am doing the that type of test, some null hypothesis I am doing. So, we have 20,000 hypothesis problem, for each gene I am, I am doing the testing of hypothesis, then I am doing that type of inequality I am using, Bonferroni's inequality, probability of intersection AI, that will give you greater than or equal to summation over probability of AI. Because n we know, n is 20,000, suppose I, I, my, num, my number of genes is 20,000, so n is known to me, n minus 1 is known to me. Probability of a1 is known to me, what is the probability, because each individual test we are carrying out, so each individual test result we know, what is the probability of null hypothesis is true. So, 20,000 probability of AI we know, so we can calculate the probability of intersection of 20,000 uh, uh, all those genes. Uh, so, in that case, uh, that is a very crude approach, but I am telling you that uh, that is the possibly the simplest approach, the way you can calculate the, that hypothesis what he is trying to say that using Bonferroni's inequality. Okay. Now, I want to discuss some other concept like uh, conditional probability. So, now you know the probability, uh, I just want to discuss conditional probability. It is defined in this way. In the, in the note, there is one real very more nice motivating example is given to uh, given in the note. I have discussed in the note, but it will take a long time. That is why I am skipping in the lecture. But uh, if you read the note, you will, you will uh, 
you will enjoy that example that that is really a very nice example for uh, for understanding the conditional probability. A and B to events and then conditional probability that is defined by That means, given the information of B, you know, you already have known, you, you are familiar with what is unconditional probability. But whenever the condition of B is given to you, then that is the definition, uh, probability intersection B divided by probability of B. Uh, that is the definition of the conditional probability. Just I want to say that one thing about the concept of the uh, conditional probability. Whenever we are dealing with the, uh, this is one fact that is also very, uh, this is mathematical definition probability A given B to probability A intersection B divided by probability of B. Uh, but uh, one fact you should, you, you, you should keep in your mind, whenever we are dealing with the probability of A, our sample space is omega. But whenever we are dealing with the conditional probability A given B, our sample space is B. Uh, so, that is one fundamental change is happening in the case of uh, conditional probability. That means, uh, uh, you can treat it, uh, you can treat it as a B is your sample space. Given that sample space, uh, you are trying to calculate the probability. So, that is the fundamental point uh, whenever you are defining uh, the conditional probability. And it is also a probability of A given B is also a probability function that you can check that uh, what is omega given B, what is uh, probability, what the, the, the three conditions what I wrote in the earlier that the uh, basic properties of the kind of probability function, this function if you consider this is a function, uh, this function is a mapping from all subsets of omega, so all subsets of B to 0 to 1, something is changing. So, even after that it is a, it is a nice probability function, okay. There is a few rules so that is called multiplication rule. So, it is given that probability A given B equal to probability A intersection B divided by probability of B. So, that implies that probability of A intersection B and there is one definition. Just uh, I want to give uh, one example of the multiplication rules is that uh, uh, this is just a uh, direct simplification probability intersection B equal to this one. And one example just I want to give. And suppose an arm content. Three red walls and three red walls and one blue ball. Uh, 
and two balls are selected. without replacement uh, then what want to know what is the uh, probability that both balls one by one what is the probability that uh, both balls are rate want to know So, what is the probability? So, let you can define suppose iron contains 3 red balls and 1 blue balls and we are drawing 2 balls 1 by 1 and without replacement and we want to know that the both ball are red. Suppose R1 is the at the first drawn in the first drawn uh, first draw the red ball will appearing and R2 is the in the second draw also the, the second trial also the red ball is appearing. So, uh, we can write in this way. So, probability R1 intersection R2 that is equal to probability R1 hmm? that is multiplication law. probability A intersection B equal to probability A given B into probability B. So, R, R1 into probability R2 given R1. So, how many balls were there? There are uh, 3 red balls and 1 blue balls. So, first ball will be coming red that is uh, 3 by 3 by 4 hmm? and one ball is already given to you red that means first ball is already drawn red ball is drawn so remaining balls 2 red 1 blue so altogether 3 balls is remaining and uh, again red will be coming so 2 third So, half is the probability. This is the straightforward use of uh, uh, multiplication. Now, uh, there is a one very crucial result that is theorem of uh, total probability. Uh, suppose uh, uh, we know that a sample space omega is partitioned into a few sets uh, B1, B2, Bn and we want to calculate the probability A. Uh, in terms of the B1, B2, Bn. What I am trying to say, suppose the situation is something like that. This is your omega. This is B1, B2, B3, B4, B5, B6, B7, B8, B9. And I want to calculate this probability. Suppose this is my A. We want to calculate this probability A in terms of the probability of B1, B2, Bn and probability A given Bi. Suppose the information is given to you, probability of B1, B2, Bn you know you know the probability of what is given to you probability A given B i is also known. So, in terms of that, in terms of that you want to calculate the uh, probability of A. So, the statement is that A 
let b1, b2, b n be such that those are events. equal to null set for all i not equal to j and and say mutually exclusive and exhaustive suppose then That is the theorem of total probability. Probability of A equal to summation over I equal to 1 to N, probability of BI. Because these informations are given to you, probability of BI informations are given to you, probability A given BIs are also given to you, and based on these informations, you can calculate the probability of A. The proof is also very easy, but I am skipping the proof. I just uh, one very nice example, at least that example will give you an idea. In England, it has happened in 1954, that example I want to give you, that will give you one. How total theorem of total probability use essentially. There are in 1954 the study it was happened uh, essentially in, in England. There are three income group, upper income group, middle income group, lower income group. And they wanted to test that and they know that the, the nearly the proportion that at that time in England how many population in the population the proportion of population belong to the upper income group and the proportion belong to the middle income group and proportion belong to the uh, lower income group. And based on that, they wanted to calculate and they had some few more informations like if someone uh, is parents in upper income group, what is the probability of that the son will be son or daughter will be in the again upper income group, those type of information uh, they had. Then they wanted to, uh, they wanted to know that the, what is the probability of actually that the, uh, in the next generation, the, the proportion of the upper income group, all those things. I am writing then it will be very clear what I am trying to say that. Say a real example. And So, U1, M1, L1 is the income of parents generation that means earlier generation and U2, M2, L2 is the income of the present generation and it is given that it is given that uh, it is also given to you probability of U1 equal to 0 0.1 probability of M1 is equal to 0 0.4 and probability of L1 equal to 0 0.5. In, this is studied in 1954. At that time, 
uh, England was not so, it was developed country, but it was not like today's England. So, uh, you can think about that. 50 percent were in the lower income group. And a few more information is given to you. A very nice matrix is, uh, was given. So, U1 is the present generation. So, if given U2, that means uh, what I am trying to say, uh, uh, yes, probability U2, probability of, uh, if, if parents are in the upper income group, uh, the, uh, uh, the next generation will be also in the upper income group, that probability is 0.45. Similarly, M2 given E1 that is 0 0.48, uh, L2 given E1 uh, that is 0 0.07, okay. So, rho sum is equal to 1, the, um, the earlier generation, uh, the upper income group that is 1, uh, that is also 1, that is also 1. Now, suppose we want to generate, suppose we want to know. What is the probability that a person in the present generation will be in you? That means we want to calculate what is the probability of U2. Present generation means uh, this is I have written U1, M1, L1 is income of present uh, parents generation and U2, M2, L2 is income of present generation. And that matrix is given to us that U1, U, U1, U2, U1, M2, U1, L2, M1, U2, M1, M2, M1, L2 all those combinations we have that information is given to you. Now it is the, the question is that what is the what is the probability that a person in the present generation will be in, in U? So, probability of that means it is probability of U2. So, how it may happen? It may happen that the a present generation person is in the, is in the upper income group that may happen in a three ways. Uh, their parents were, was in the, their parents were in the upper income group. Their parents were in the middle income group, their parents were in the lower income group, uh, three ways it may happen. So, uh, this probability, if you, if you think about when I, if you try to recall the theorem of total probability, theorem of total probability was that probability of A equal to summation over I equal to 1 to N probability of BI into probability of A given BI. This matrix is gives you the probability of A given BI. And this information, what I wrote, probability U1, M1, L1, that is gives you the probability of B1, probability of B2, probability of B3. This is the partition. This is the partition. And given the partition, what will happen? That that's gives you the matrix. Okay. So, probability of U2 equal to
This step is clear. Hmm? This step should be very crystal clear. So that probability essentially you can write one more step. Probability of u2 equal to probability of u2 intersection u1 plus probability of u2 intersection m1 plus probability of u2 intersection l1. Then you can use the multiplicative law that's that's way you can get. So that is equal to probability of uh, probability of u2 given u1 that is given to you 0 0.45. and probability of u1 equal to 0 0.10 probability of u2 given uh, given m1 is 0 0.05 probability of m1 equal to 0 0.4 and probability of u2 given l1 is 0 0.01 into probability of uh, L1 equal to 0 0.5 that I calculated that was came that came 0 0.07 okay so probability of u2 equal to 0 0.07 so probability of u1 is uh, 0 0.01 so next generation means you can think about uh, uh, after 25 years one generation you can think about 25 years so 1954 it was started next generation means 1979 80 and literally in the 80s the uk has some financial problem but they had crisis so possibly that is real data also showed the same picture so uh, that's what that the probability of e1 earlier it was 0 0.1 it is a significant difference in the if you think about social science it is a significant difference three percent is decreasing so probability of e1 is 0 0.07 okay so i think uh, now we can take a one short break then i will try to i will come back with the base theorem my plan is that at that time i can i can manage this one i believe that i will be able to manage by so uh, this one so whenever we'll have the base theorem after base theorem base theorem also i will try to discuss one very nice uh, real data example and that is also studied in england related to breast cancer and then I will give some few more mathematical facts like uh, mutual independence, all those things. Uh, so uh, that's okay. And you will send me the email ID. In that case, I will share the notes also. I can send them. All those, uh, the, uh, this is essentially my handwritten short notes, what I am teaching in the course. Okay, so we can go for break. I think uh, some tea or something like that will be there. And we will come back here again 4.30.